in spasticity, Emerson, the symptoms produced by multiple sclerosis and lesions of the spinal cord are quite similar, with pain, spasticity, and ataxy as the main complaints. These symptoms are very hard to treat with the current medications. Given the results from the preclinical trials, there seems to be enough evidence for the efficacy of cannabis in spasticity. However, there is not enough clinical evidence to confirm this. More research is needed on the efficacy of cannabis for this indication. Again, the effect of the cannabis simplex versus the individual or combined cannabinoids, the synthetic ones, and the anxiolytic and sedative effects in relation to these symptoms. In the following review of mobility disorders, I will mainly focus on Gilles de la Tourette and Morbus Parkinson. This, this syndrome, Gilles de la Tourette, is seen in one out of 2,500 people. So there are very many people with ticks walking around. Recent clinical research on the effects of cannabinoids on patients with this syndrome revealed moderate to full improvement of their muscle control. Also, it seemed that the endocannabinoid system, by, involving, by involvement of the CB1 receptor agonist, was related to the pathophysiology of Gilles de la Tourette. In Parkinson's disease, cannabinoids play a major role in the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease. Based on the available study results, we can assume that cannabis receptor antagonists can be useful in the treatment of Morbus Parkinson in the future. Also, in this case, we need more research, especially on the effect of cannabis on spasticity and its anxiolytic and sedative effects in this category of patients. There is limited scientific research on the effects of cannabinoids and epilepsy. The same counts for the biological support. From exper experiments, there is little support that cannabinoids play an important role in epilepsy. Given this, these results, the expectations are not very promising. The last subject in the road of neurological disorders is traumatic lesions. Preclinical research indicates that synthetic endocannabinoids have in neuroprotective properties. We need more research for these neuroprotective properties, maybe a task for the pharmaceutical industry. Research on the neuroprotective properties of dexanabinol is hopeful and already in phase three. <coughs> it is also known for, from the literature that cannabis plays an important role in del delaying the process of Alzheimer's disease. Until now, cannabis and THC were used to treat the side effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy in cancer patients. The picture arising from the recent literature today is that Endocannabinoids play an important role in cancer cell proliferation and probably endocannabinoids function as an immunosuppressant and an anti-proliferative and cytotoxic agent. Research is still in a preclinical phase, but a favorable, a favorable application in the future will have to focus on the effects of the individual cannabinoid receptor agonist and antagonist on the development of cancer. More research may bring up a whole new range of anti-cancer drugs. Development of these drugs seems again a task for the pharmaceutical industry. New results, recent results, this is just an example of all these last results done on cannabis in relation to cancer. You can imagine that there were a lot of animals involved in this research. 
and from them we received a postcard with this text. They enjoyed it and they said nobody got sick and nobody died while testing. Okay, cannabis in palliative care. In palliative care, there are various symptoms or combination of symptoms on which cannabis has an effect. The objective of palliative care is always to improve the quality of life. The indications for palliative care, you can read on the slide. Anorexia and weight loss, nausea and emesis, co-medication with opiates, and neuropathic pain. Today research is done on all these diverse indications. Depending on the outcome of the studies, the exact place of cannabis in palliative care will become more and more clear in the years to come. Though I believe that every physician working in palliative care today should have access to medical cannabis, like medical grade cannabis. Especially when treating patients receiving morphine, the doctor will find cannabis a useful supplement to his therapeutic arsenal. Here is just a brief summary you have had as a handout from for different indications I just mentioned. Then, at the end, I would. Cannabinoid receptors seem to be an interesting target for the development of new medicines by the pharmaceutical industry today. The first cannabinoid antagonist has just been registered as an anti obesity drug. It was introduced in Europe in June 2006 under the name Acomplia. The generic name is Rimonabant, as I previously mentioned. Registration in the US of this product is to be expected in the near future under the name of Zimulti. Acomplia also improves the cardiovascular and metabolic risk profile in different ways by increasing HDL cholesterol and decreasing the triglycerides. The underlying mechanism of this action is still subject of research, but Rimonaban seems to raise the level of adenopectin, a specific protein produced by the fat cell, which seems to play an important role in our fat metabolism. Also, they claim that Rimonaban stimulates the uptake of insulin in the muscle tissue, and so improves the insulin sensitivity. So you can prescribe this very well to your diabetic patients. Study results indicate that Rimonaban can support patients who give up smoking and or drinking. Finally, they claim that it decreases the abdominal circumference in, and in regard to this, I would like to show you some study results about this product. The, the it was a, a very large, uh, a big trial, extensive trial was done, and the patients received 20 milligrams of Rimonaband in, a, with, in combination with a diet. And the results after one year showed an average weight loss of 8 kilo uh, against 2 kilo in the placebo group. The average decrease of the abdominal circumference is nine centimeter, was 9 centimeters in the month this trial in comparison to three centimeters in the placebo group. The insights in the physiology of endocannabinoid system is growing fast and turned the world of physiology upside down. The different endocannabinoid receptors located all over the human body and our endocannabinoids seem to be an interesting target for the development of new medicines for various diseases. Though we still have a long way to go, the future looks very promising for cannabinoids. It is very important for today's physician to have more knowledge about medical cannabis and to have access to medical cannabis of pharmaceutical quality for their patients. 
the answer to my opening question, if cannabis is more than a drug, for me, it's a definite yes. Thanks for your attention.